relates to the heading and the image and how do they relate to each other so the, when you're looking at the, hemi, the, the, the heading and the image as a, as a shape because remember the heading and the image is a shape tone doesn't refer to the shape tone refers to the light and the dark tone refers to the color light and dark or the tonal values of a color it doesn't refer to the shape so first we've got to solve the shape getting the shape of the text and the shape of the image to marry and how do we get the shapes to marry now remember in any relationship or any the typical stereotype relationship is which is the man and which is the woman the man because he's slightly taller the man because he earns the most money he's slightly dominant so who will be the man and who will be the woman when it comes to image and text um, I don't know. Text will be the man. and who's going to be the woman good because I said the text is more important than the image now look at the battle when you look at the design look at the battle between the text and the image are they battling each other is the become the one becoming less important than the other you see so you you can have it in design that the text is the most important design element and the the image could just be merely the background but try to make them both equally important but making the text slightly more important okay so how do you how do you marry the two shapes the text shape and the image shape you got to consider what what do you got to consider how okay so let's let me talk about what you're considering who is in a relationship yeah the top or the bottom who's in the relationship oh. why didn't you say the bottom is in a relationship spread apart so the closer the text gets to the image the more they marry right now remember if the image is a bird or the target or the person is the target where do you think when you're looking at a bird or a person where do you think is the focal point when I look at you, where is the focal point of you? Do I approach you and I talk to you and I look at your feet? Yes. Uh, huh? The face. The face. <laughs> you see, that, that's the focal point. There. So why would I put the text here at the bottom? When that's the focal point, I should put the text near the focal point. Either next to it or on top of it. You know what I'm saying? So, so the focal point is the layout. Why would you want to be facing, why would you, the, 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 the image want to be facing outside the layout? So if there's a head, point the head inside the layout. Turn the bird inside the layout, not to face outside the layout. Now if, if it's in here in the middle, now it doesn't matter if the person's looking to the left or the person's looking to the right, because the person is in the middle, so now it doesn't matter. But if the person is to the left and he's looking that way, not good because he's looking out of the layout turn him around if he was looking that way but he was on this side then he's looking into the layout okay so that's just how your shapes are getting married to the layout and to each other so another way of marrying a text to the layout don't put the text right against the margin remember text must always have breathing space along the margin can, but you can put a picture against the margin because a picture can bleed out but text is not wanting to bleed out unless you purposefully, purposefully do it but we're talking about classic design here and classic design says the position of your shapes gives harmony what is harmony? a good marriage a good design. There's no conflict. There's no conflict. 
There's no one that's dominating too much. You don't mind if one slightly dominates, but not too much. It's like if I have a conversation with him and I'm the lecturer, it's, a, it, it's expected that I'm the dominant because I'm the lecturer, he's listening. But if I keep on not letting him answer, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm too dominant. You know what I'm saying? So in a relationship, there you can allow for a certain amount of dominance, but it's got to be within the context. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Then we don't have any conflict. That's why I said it's slightly bigger, but it's not way smaller. You see, so when you're walking in, in, in a mall, and you see a relationship or two couples, now they're very close to each other. So I just wanted to mention here, yeah, it's the position and the size. size. Alright, so I'm walking in the mall. Right? Now I'm, well, I'm there's couples. I see there's a couple. There's a couple. Because they're holding hands, they're close to each other. And then there, I see there's another couple. And I look at them. But they're a couple. Why am I suddenly look at them? Because they don't, they look odd. The one is so fat, and the other one's really thin. <laughs> so they look odd. And the one is tall, and the other one's a little midget. You know what I'm saying? It's just, the size just looks odd. Have you, have you noticed a tall guy with a short girl? My, me and my wife. You know, so, so it, it, it seems like a bit odd. Or a muscular guy and a thin girl. You know, just too odd. You know, in terms of size. Or oh, ugly and pretty. Uh, yeah, but ugly and pretty you can't always notice because it's so small. Ugly is in the face. Or, but usually by the, 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 the shape of the body. The size of the body and the shape of the body. You know, when it's just over exaggerated. No, nothing is, it's harmony when it's slightly different. But it's not harmony when it's like totally different. So sometimes you look at the design and you can't figure out quite what it is that's distractful. But if you know, you can improve it. Okay, so size. Now, when we talk about size, whoo, the text has got to be slightly more dominant. It can be slightly more bigger. But then you say, but the whole image is big. So how could I have created, how could I create the, 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 the harmony? Because it depends on the focal point. If the focal point is the head, then make your size relative to the focal point. You know what I'm saying? So if I looked at your size, and, and, and then, then if this focal point is correct, and you're placing it in the space now, right? It's big. Remember, I said what creates good. Uh, 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 the first thing is the is the position and the size. And then I talked about the next thing you look at is the overall tone, and it's relating to the depth as well. The dark and the light relates to the depth, but even the shape can re can relate to depth. Because why must you put it right up? Why must you crop the image right up against you? If you got if you got birds of prey there, oh, let me just say, say which one. Okay, okay. Why I like your birds of prey is because the head was looking at the bee. They were so totally married. Did you see the, the design on the WhatsApp? The bee was looking. The, the the head of the bird was looking at the bee, and then the body was turned away, and there was the bird. So I've kept on looking at that and then I look down and I keep looking to the top because one reads from the top to bottom. But if you crop it, you crop it there. But what birds of prey? But if, if you had the birds of prey there and the birds of prey there, even if you put it in a bigger space, even if it was in a bigger space, it would still look good. Because in the bigger space, it's in the top and it's in the center top. So it doesn't matter how big your space is, it's still going to look okay. You don't have to keep cropping it. You with me? So the position has got to be, that once you've married the two, you can also look at the position in terms of the layout. You with me? 
So there's always going to be a focal point and in the position of the layout. Okay, but first you've got to get the position and the size of the shape right, and then you can see how it's going to fit in the layout. Okay, then we're looking, then we look at tone. Now we first start off by looking at the overall tone. Remember what we said is every shape, let's say you take the bird, the bird itself. The bird itself will also have tone. Why? Because there will be light and there will be dark. Because that's how you create the shape. Otherwise the bird is just an outline. So there will be tone within the bird itself. And even the bird itself will have an overall tone. So there will be very dark spots and there will be very light spots and there will be an overall tone. And then that overall tone then relates to the background which which also has a tonal value. And then it relates to the text, which will also have a tonal value. Okay, so there are tonal values. Uh, Colin, could you just get us the, 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 the fan and just bring the fan here? Okay, so now I want you to get the idea of what I mean by tone. Tone relates to two things. It relates to the tonal values, okay, and usually the tonal values of number one, grayscale, and the tonal values of mono tone. So grayscale is your black and white, and mono tone I'm going to refer to as one color. Because monochromatic means one color of, of a color. So think of monotone of one color. Now what I'm talking about, why one color? Because here I'm talking about what's the most dominant color. So what is the dominant color? So in the tonal values, you're still going to have a dominant color. Right, then you're going to ask yourself, what is the overall, overall tone? Meaning, the overall tone is referring to the, is it referring to the tonal values? What is it referring to in terms of the overall tone? It's light, and light and dark. Light versus dark. Is the overall tone light or dark? And if it's dark, or mid-tone. Uh, or mid-tone. Don't forget about the mid-tone. It's light or dark or mid-tone. And once you've determined it's a mid-tone or a dark or a light, then e what is the most dominant color of that? And what are the color values? What range is it? Is it mid-tone values? What is the, the, the color values of it? Right. So, let me give you an, a simple illustration. Let's talk about the couples again. Okay, so the couples go and they now go to look at a beautiful scenery. Okay, they don't want to go look at a tree. They don't want to go look at a monument. They don't want to go look at a flower. They don't want to look at anything specific. Because overall tone is talking about overall. So they decide to go look at a landscape. I'm standing to the back, I'm looking at the landscape. When do you think they would want to look at that landscape? 12 o'clock midday? Or early morning or late evening? Nice either because I mean, yeah, but, okay, okay, sorry, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But when do most people go and look at the landscape? Couples, especially when do when they want to see the landscape? Do they go early morning? Do they go in the middle of the day or do they go in the evening? In the evening, evening. why? That's when, like, the, all, the, all the colors and the lights the, uh, come out, and the lights, yeah, the lights, the sun does nice things with the sky and stuff. 
And what is the uh, dominant color of the sky? Orange, maybe. Orange, because it's a sunset. Everybody loves a sunset. Why? Because if you notice in the sunset, the trees, you can't see the leaves, you can't see detail. Everything goes darker. The mountain, Table Mountain, goes darker overall. You don't see the, the midday, you see all the crifts and the, the tonal values of the mountain and the trees. But at sunset, it's like it blanks out the, the detail and the trees get dark and everything get darker and then this overall color is orange. Can you see the harmony created there? Because it's no longer the blue of the sky versus the blue of the mountain clashing. The one is lighter, the one is darker. There's no more the, the, the whiteness of the clouds now. Now suddenly the clouds are white, the sky is blue and the mountain is purple. Clashing colors. But at sunset, the clouds take a purplish, uh, 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 orangey tone. It's still white, but it takes an orangey tone. The sky takes a more orangey tone and the reflection of, of the orange goes on the mountain not so much, but there's no detail now. Now it becomes an overall color of orange. You hear what I'm saying? But the picture that you see is not orange. It's just there's a dominant color. So it's like bathed, almost. Yes, in it's bathed. Now what, so I'm going to introduce you the third, the, the second thing you've got to think of when you think of color, because you're not just thinking of color tone, because remember when you're thinking of tone, you're thinking of color tone, whether it's a dominant color, you're thinking of color tone, and the tonal values of a dominant color. Remember what is the tonal values? From the blackness of it to the whiteness of it is the tonal values, right, the range. And somewhere in the middle is the mid-tone color. But you're, and then you're looking at the overall tone in terms of lightness and darkness. But now I'm going to say to you the next thing you're looking at is, and I'm going to call it the relatives. Right, so here's the man and the woman. Okay, they can both wear pants. I'm not going to make a weird dress. We're living in model, modern world, world now. Now I'm going to talk about this couple as relatives. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, cousins, relatives. So the two most important relatives is the mother-in-law and the father-in-law. So this is the in-laws. So I don't know if you want to call it the mother-in-law and the father-in-law. Father-in-law. Mother-in-law. Doesn't matter which one. These are the two relatives. They are the most important ones after the positioning of it, after the sizing of it, after now we put grayscale because we haven't put in any color. But when we start putting in color, you are, are looking at color now. Remember I spoke, spoke, uh, spoke to you yesterday about, we're looking at color now, right? So when you're starting to introduce color, there's a dominant color. So the tonal values of the dominant color. I would say the mother-in-law is the dominant one, yeah? Okay, yeah. so it's the dominant color. That's important. But inside this color or that color tone, no image, even the sunset, if you look at that whole sunset, not everything is orange. There's still a tinge of blue in the mountain and a tinge of white in the clouds and so on. And what do you call that? You call, but it's not so dominant. The blue now, the mountain is not so dominant. The white of the clouds is not so dominant. It's now as if on the scale of the other colors. So let's say there was other colors. There was the dominant orange, there was the blue, so dominant orange means if this is the darkest orange going to the whitest orange, Get from dark to light, remember we're going from dark to light, so where would this color range sit of the orange, would it sit here, here or there, can you see it will sit more or less here, because it's going more towards the darker orange than the white orange, right, now the blue, where would the blue sit then? The blue is not going to be so dominant, so the blue is going to sit in the range. Sorry guys, I, don't, I draw very fast and I don't draw neat, but you know this is dark and that is light. Yeah, yeah. Where would the blue sit? 
And then where would the, the, I would say the white or the gray of the clouds sit? Let's, let's talk about the clouds. So let's say the clouds were gray and white, white and gray. So I would say the blue is not so dominant, so, and it's not so white, but it'll probably sit about there, in the middle, towards the white. And even the white will sit in the middle, but even a little bit more towards the white. But the color... Now, what do we call these colors here, these in-between colors? And if they start sitting on the right plane, then they are marrying. But midday, this color is sitting too bright, and this blue is sitting too bright, and this orange is so dull, so there is no dominant color. But the rest of the colors, to blend in the colors, we talk about the rest of the colors then as the color... This I'm going to call color tonal values, color tone, and this I'm going to call color U. So think of the color, the color U, the U of the color. So when I when I say what is the a color U, what's the a U of a color? So, it's, it's the in-between. The in-between. The in-balls, the in-between. It's the ins, in-between. It's not the most important. Right. So, let's say, what are the I six... The net, maybe, are you... The in-between. Yeah, because it creates, almost like that sunset creates a vignette, like going from the orange, the blue, the purple. No, but those are the color, the, that is the, the rainbow colors, yeah. right? So if you look at if you look at the colors of the rainbow, right? So there's the rainbow. We've all seen the rainbow, eh? Hey? You know that the blue fades, the, oh, sorry, the purple, purple fades into the blue, fades into the green, fades into the yellow, fades into the orange, and fades into the red. Yeah. You see, that's how they fade into each other. But you still at one point get a dominant blue, a dominant green, a dominant yellow, a dominant uh, orange, and a dominant red. These are the one, two, three, four, five, six dominant colors you get. And we call this warm, cool colors, and we call these warm colors. Wow, split in half, this is warm. Yellow, orange, red, warm. Blue, green, purple, cool. You see, so as the rainbow colors split, you've got cool and... Now, I don't want to go too much in colors, but the color U is where they transition. They're in between. They're in between. Right? And so, in other words, you can have a blue, but the monotone of blue here is a light blue. But you can have a mono... You can have a red... A red that falls on the same color scale or, or the same hue or tonal scale value as the light blue by making the red pink. Now they're on the same, they're different colors, but they're very close because the one is pink and the one is light blue. So on the tonal scale, they seem married. Because no one dominates. You with me? So, so now you're talking about, I can see it's not light blue. There's a tinge of red in it. But it's not quite red. It's pink, blue. So there's a U. The dominant one is still light blue. But there's a tinge of a, a red U. Like a pink U. A red U. Pink, a red U in this light blue. Or, if I switch it around, I can say, the whole thing is pink, but it's like a blue U, a light blue U. Are you with me? It's those little things you start noticing the longer you look at it. Initially, you see light blue, and then you look again, and you, as you go closer, you see there's a bit of pink in there. That we call the U, the in-between. Right? So, it's the in-between where the color changes. Because they're more or less on the same color tonal scale. So remember color tonal scale means mono, monotone, meaning 
red going right down to white and in between is is your pink right now some the colors have now started creating <coughs> names of their own so where, where does the name turquoise come from where does turquoise come? have you all, all heard of turquoise what is turquoise Blue. You see, now you're getting, now they call it turquoise because it's green blue. Is it blue? Is it green? It's green blue. And we can't call that green blue. Call it turquoise. Okay, I'll call it turquoise. Okay, we'll call it turquoise. So it's not blue and it's not green. It's both. So we call it turquoise. It's like a man and a woman again that's been married too long. You don't know who's more the most dominant. Is the man dominant? Is the woman dominant? No, they're both dominant. They're both equal. So we give them a different name. Okay? Right, so why I'm saying that is because the you becomes also very important in creating the, 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 the harmony within the design. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm saying to you is, look at the dominant color and if you in your design choose blue to be the dominant color, you choose blue to be the dominant color, how can you make that harmony? Well, put in your design different colors of blue, different tones of blue, monotones of blue. So if your eagle is blue, right, there's the blue eagle, right, and he was in a sky, cut out the eagle and Put different shades of blue in the sky that is more related, with, where the tonal values are close. Because if the tonal values are too far, then it's noticeable. But if the tonal values are close, it becomes less low, noticeable and, and it, it sort of marries. You with me what I'm saying? So in your heading, instead of having white, why don't you just make it a very monotone of blue? So if you look at it, it could be white if it goes black and white, but if it's blue, light blue, it still works. It still gives, creates depth. Okay? So what I'm saying is that I now want to go, you've got the understanding of the color now, now I want to go into the background. Okay? Because color can give depth. You see how the light and the dark of the monotone can give depth? Right? The hue isn't giving depth. The U is just adding to it or taking away from it. So it's good to have a U because if the two colors are too different, then they're not going to marry. If you've got a green and a blue, it's not going to marry. But if you have a green and a turquoise, it's going to work. Or if you have a blue and a turquoise, it's going to work. That is why blue and turquoise and green and turquoise always work together in a design. If you decide what is my second color going to be. Because you're going to see in my future lectures, I'm going to have one more lecture. I'm going, to about, I'm going to talk about bringing in a second color. That is like, that is like, it's like, it's like when you look at a cloud and you see the silver lining. That silver lining is so dominant and so white and so bright that you can't help seeing the silver lining. But there's such a little of it that it doesn't bother you. So if you bring in a second color, if this whole design is blue, or the whole design is orange. You can bring in a second color that is totally unrelated. As long as it doesn't, as long as it's a little bit and not overwhelming. This is where you can put a second outline to the text. A second color on the outline. This is where you can start introducing a panel at the bottom and giving it a second color. So, I want to talk about the background and introducing to you blocks okay I, I, i'm going to rub this out it's fine it's on the video okay so right in the beginning i said the the way we create harmony is through color and depth but we all know that positioning the shapes and sizing the shapes is the first thing you've got to consider right so I'm, I'm almost taking that as known. Now to create harmony, I've talked about tone and I've talked about depth. So let's talk about depth 
And let's also talk at the same time, same time about the background of your design. Right. So, you've got to lay out space. Right? And I said to you that um, what, what sort of creates the... If you, if you got an image, and there you've got the image, and it's small, and you've got the text, and it's small... Somewhere and at some point, if you the smaller you go, that image must be in a block. That picture originally is in a block. You got an image off the internet. You got somebody's taking a photograph. It's not infinite. At some point, when you zoom out, you're going to see a block. Do you agree? If you zoom in. You'll see, oh, it appears that there's more of the picture, but you don't know how much of it. So if you see a picture that bleeds, or if that's the layout and the picture bleeds, in other words, it's right against the margin, right? It's not in a block. Then you are imagining that that block is going to be somewhere. So if you say it's a window, then you can say it's infinite, infinite. But as soon as you see a block inside the layout, you know it's no longer infinite. It's showing the block. You with me? Right. So once it's got a block and your design space is that, then this becomes the background. Listen to me carefully. As soon as you see the block, this becomes the background. Now you're going to say to me, but Calvin, this is now... This is now confusing me, and I'm going to tell you why I understand it's confusing you, but I still want you to see it as the background. Only once the block appears do you see it as the background. Cause, because when you did your birds of prey, you had the picture right against the edge. Not so? Right against the edge. I couldn't see where the picture ends. So the picture could have ended outside my layout. Right? And I'm saying a background only appears all from there. From, the, from there onwards. Not inside. But then you're going to say, I saw an eagle here. And the eagle had a background. Yes. That's the picture background. That's the photo background. But that is not the layout background. What is the layout? The layout is the width and the height of your little panel or window that you're viewing at here. So it's still a background, but it is the image background, the photo background. It's not the layout background. This is the layout, the width and the height. Right? Yeah? Just you can to throw a question. cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah. Um, if your image bleeds off the page, yes. wouldn't that then be, wouldn't the actual image become the background? Because now you're layering all yes. your copy on top of that. Yes, the image could be seen as the background. Yeah. But we don't perceive it as the background because we still perceive it as part of the photograph. The only time we start seeing it as a background and not as a photograph. Is when what happens? You will never call that that birds of prey, that image that you had of that bird. You would never say that's the background. You would say that's the image I'm using. You would never say it's a, it's the background. But as soon as you put a transparency to it, yeah. it's as if that background is now blurring into a transparency. So it's now becoming a background because it's no. It's now as if. There's no more relationship between the text and the image. The image, as soon as you take that image and you are fading it, transparency it, you're not making it important anymore. You're divorcing the two. You, you, they might be close together, but they divorced. You know what I'm saying? It's not important. This now becomes unimportant because it's faded. It's like a watermark. This now becomes very dominant. So let me give you an illustration. The relationship, I'm trying to think of movie stars that are very much in love. You don't really get movie stars very much in love. 
No, you don't. Okay, that's one thing of two movie stars, a man and a woman that's very much love. Yeah, is there some? Is there some? But it's very hard to think about yeah. them because they each dominate. This woman, Hurley, is so dominant, and this pi Pirates of the Car Caribbean is so dominant that their relationships are doomed not to work because they both want to be in the limelight and to be stars. You, you can't even think of who, you, you can't even think of uh, Tom Cruise being in a relationship because nobody can say who's his wife or who's his wife, who is Tom Cruise's wife, I don't know. You see, he's, he's too dominant. So this is a, a, a typical example where the male is so dominant that you don't even know who is his girlfriend. But if they are very much close, you'll know who, who he's going out with. Angelina and Brad Pitt, they were kind of... But then they got... Yeah, yeah. but so they're not together. Not anymore. anymore. But in the beginning, they, you, you, they called it Angelina. What? Or Ange Brain. Brangelina yeah, or something. Oh, yes, so were. in love they seem, yeah. as if they were... Like one. But one or yeah. other wants to hit the spotlight too much. They're not yeah. satisfied being no. equal. You see? Both and, but I'll, I'll give you the, an example of the most furthest apart is the queen when she was alive you uh -huh. hardly see the the, the, the king she is the queen you know the queen the old queen yeah, yeah they died she just died recently but we all loved we all knew that in the background they had a good relationship and it was going good but publicly she was the dominant one why i'm just saying that is because in your design you've got to make the image and the text both equally dominant even if the text is slightly dominant and the background must not be dominant the background is there to add to the design not to dominate the design it's supporting, it's supporting the design it's yeah. not mustn't dominate it it must support but the two is important that's what i'm saying if you're looking at that picture of that eagle and to answer your question if if the, it is in full color if it's not transparent then it's on equal setting, equal footing. Mm -hmm. And you can't talk, of, you can talk about it as being the background, but you can't talk of it, about it as being the layout background. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a difference between the layout background and the image background. And both the image background and the layout background must contribute to the image and the text. You agree? Right. So, what do I want to think of as backgrounds? I'm trying to let you think is if it bleeds, one wants to tend to see the image as being part uh, of the uh, a part of the background as if there is no background. You know what I'm saying? It is as if there is no background. But as soon as I put a rock on that image. Let's say I put on a block from at the bottom and the image bleeds out from there. Then this bottom panel starts becoming the, the, the background of the layout. So there's the layout. There's the image. There's the layout. There's the image. There's the layout. There's the image. So I'm going to put the image in red. Now remember the image now, if I put a little cross there, it means the image is bleeding out. That's full color. Full color, okay. bleeding out. Yeah. Full color, but not bleeding out. Yeah. Now this is obvious where we start thinking this as being the background, the white background. Right? Because it's so small. But here we're starting to get confused because there's almost equal weighting, equal size. So, we don't know if this is, so, so, so a lot of people don't see, see this as there's a background there, and then they see this as a block. Oh, it's just a block that they've placed over the, the image. And yeah, it could even be seen as a little block that you placed over the image, because it's so small. But the smaller the image, even if it bleeds, the smaller the image, you still know that this is the background. Even if the text goes there, and if I talk about the background, show me the image, show me the text, and show me the background. You'll say, there's the image, there's the text, and there's the background. But if it's bleeding, and I say, show me the text, you'll say, 
there's the text, there's the image, and there's the background. And I'll say, no, 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 that's not the background, it's still part of the image. You, 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 you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So, this is why I'm introducing what I call blocks or panels. Because if I look at this bottom section that I've put in there, it could be a block that I've placed over the entire image, or it could be seen as the background. But I still want you to perceive it as the background because it bleeds. Because it bleeds. Meaning it's edge to edge. But if that panel was like inside the picture, then I'm going to call it a block and not a background. Because it's not bleeding. Guys, are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. That bleeds. This doesn't bleed. So I call this a block and I call this the background or a background panel. So I just call it a panel. Yeah. If you, in that scenario where you put that solid block at the bottom, yes. but your image is bleeding off to the back, but it's transparent, then that block then becomes the foreground, isn't it? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because, then because of the transparency because of the dread, the becomes depth. the background. Yeah, but yeah. I still say uh, 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 it, what it does is it's both is the background, both is the background, but it's just the depth. Yeah, like a layer. It's like a layer. It's the yeah. depth. Because you only can get three things in a layout. You can only... A layout is made out of three things. Text, image, and background. And I'm going to say to you... Don't forget color, because there's always color, unless it's a black and white. Who would ever have a design in black and white? But that actually is still a color, grayscale. I mean, if you think of it. Yes, yes, it, it, it is, but we don't think of grayscale as a color. We no. think of it as black and white. Yeah, monotone. Yes. Yeah. No, monotone, no, no. you think of color of one tone, one tone of color. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so mono means one color. But black is one color, that's where the confusion is. But we then want to rather say, to, to eliminate confusion, we say grayscale. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? To, to eliminate confusion, because if I say one color, black is one color, and it's a monotone of yeah. black. I'd rather, then, and it's a monotone of black, it's a monotone of blue. You're quite right, both is monotones. Monotone of black, monotone of blue. But we tend to think of monotone as color, because then I'm going to say monochromatic to tell it's, it's separate from the black. Otherwise, I'm going to say grayscale to make it easier to understand. So, yeah. just to make it easier to understand in our purposes, if you say monotone, people will know it's one color. Okay? And I'm referring to color and not black and white. If I say grayscale, I refer to grayscale. Look at your coral draw. If you go down, and you want to change it to black and white, what option do you cho choose? What you like bitmap. Bitmap and then? Grayscale. Grayscale. So grayscale. Yeah. Otherwise it tells you, asks you CMYK. You see, so grayscale is yeah. the, 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 the tones of... Alright, so guys, let's just stick to it there. Now I want you to know the difference between a background, a block, right? So a block can be... It doesn't necessarily have to be a background. It could be another shape. If it bleeds off, it's a background. But if it doesn't bleed off, it's a shape. Aha! So, Calvin, now you are going further down the rabbit hole because you told me yesterday there are only two shapes. And what is the two shapes? Text. What was the other shape? You've got to marry two shapes. What are you marrying? Uh, image. image and text. You're marrying in image and text. Image and text is the two shapes. And now we, uh, we are adding a third shape. There's the little third shape. Who is this? It's the baby. It's the child. <laughs> There's your three shapes. Finally, I've, each, I've got my three shapes. Okay? What did that small one be back around? No. Color. Oh. Color. No. <laughs> Block. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> okay. So.
so where does color play a role? Color is very important. But color is not the necessity in design. It's important. It adds to the design. But color can ruin your design. Absolutely. So, but color can also enhance your design. So color, I want you to see as color as everything else. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's the air you breathe. Yeah. Is your color. It's where everything is situated yes. in. It's the air you breathe. Yeah. You, you, you tell a fish, two fish are swimming in, in the water. The one tells, you, tells the other fish, uh, you in water. Then the fish is going to say, what is water? A fish doesn't know what is water. Unless he's out of water, then he knows, okay, now I know what water is because I'm out of water. It's like we're not aware that we are in a space and that there's air around us. We're just aware of us. But the space around us is very important. And the color around us is very important. But dogs don't see color. So what I'm saying is, so, so, so depth is very important. We don't see depth. We don't speak of depth. Yet, depth is very important. Okay. Because depth can add to the design. So, I'm always saying two things add to a design. Tone and depth. Tone and depth. We haven't really touched on depth. But we know that color has depth. Right? And we know that light and dark tonal values create depth. Right? And now we've learned also that, uh, so we've also learned that their mother, that their, the, 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 the in-laws here is also important because just as good, just as important is tonal values and just as important is uh, hmm. color U, tonal, uh, so that is color you, you, you speak about color tone. We don't really speak about tonal values, but we, when we speak about tone, you know there's light, light, mid-tone, dark. So you must assume that if I talk about tone, I'm talking about light and dark and mid-tone. But when I'm talking about color tone, I'm talking about the color of the tone. But, so I could be talking about the color, or I could be talking about the light and the dark. But both is important. And both gives depth. You create depth with color and you get create depth by the light and the dark. But tone refers to both color and light and dark. You with me? Okay. And then the other one is the color you. Because the color you also adds to your design. In other words, if you have a background, if you have this background, and you decide, I don't want to make the background white. I want to make the background light blue. Right, so I'm going to make it all in light blue. And then this part, I'm going to make another U of pink. And this one, I'm going to... That is white. Have you seen the babies? The blue, the pink, and the light blue. Babies. Okay, but they are on the same plane. So try to try to make different a, a different U and a different tone of the blue. So if I had to turn the background and I've got to divide it like puzzle pieces. There's my puzzle pieces. And I want to give tones of a dominant color. Then I'm going to give tones of blue. Scale of tones of blue. Right? And then one of the panels, I'm going to choose which is the most dominant tone. And then I'm just going to add the same dominant tone in that panel. So you don't notice it. But when you get closer, you notice it, and it just makes it look nicer. You, you with me? So if, I'm got a, if I've got a design, and I'm going to go dominantly dark, then you'll do all the dark blues. Shades of dark blues very close to, on the tonal scale, these dark blues are very close to each other. And then if I'm going to choose a tone of another color, of a red, then it's going to be a dark red, so that you hardly notice it. You with me? So just how you, by using a you, you can add to the color. And now, I spoke about the second color. If that you was red, what if you just throw this panel here at the bottom as a red? 
and you take the outline as a red. It's just a tinge of red, but it just adds to that you, and it just makes it stand out a little bit more. Okay, so we'll talk about that, and I'm just going to refer also to the to the images. But I'm just going to end off by again mentioning the background. I'll show you now about the color, but let's end off with the background. Okay, so the most important thing about the background is the bleed, right? So it, whether the image bleeds or whether the image doesn't bleed, all right? And whether the image is seen as a uh, transparent or not. So let's start talking about the background. So I put it on the group. There are types of backgrounds, right? So there are different types of backgrounds. So what would you say are the types of backgrounds? Color is a type. What is the most dominant color that they use for backgrounds? If you look at the backgrounds of most posters, most images, most designs, white. most layout, white. It's almost as if they didn't bother about the background, so they left it white. Right, so they just add a space, and I want to say there's a special on DVDs or, or, or of a music, whatever, and there it is, special, and I don't even care about the background, so I left it white. So, a background could be a color, it could be white, or any other straightforward color, plain color. Okay? Or what else could it be? That's the type. The, the, let's talk about the types. Uh, the, sorry, so the, the, it could be the different types. So, A, it could be the, the different colors. Color, so it can be white, red, yellow, the different colors. It could be a color, is one type. Uh, let's look at a, 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 another type. Um, let's look at another type. An image could be a type of color, of background. What else could be a, 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 a type of background? Like a texture, maybe? I'll come back to that question now. Texture. Yeah, it, it, it transparency, yeah. But when you say transparency, uh, you you are referring, you are act, you are referring basically to an image. Why won't you refer to color as being transparent? Because if I had a, if I made a color red transparent on a white background as I make it transparent and the background is white it's gonna go pink you, you know what I'm saying so I'm not really then I'm rather gonna to refer to as the color colors uh, as being a color you uh, it could, the background type could be a color you it could be a color tone tone of a color that could all be the background, as we spoke about. But an image is a background, is a type, a color is a type, a texture is a type, transparency is a type, but I'm mostly referring to a picture or a photo, as when I'm talking about transparency. What else could be a type of transparency? Let's talk about the types. What about patterns? Have you noticed that sometimes a background has a pattern? What is a pa pattern? It's just the one symbol that is repeated. Then it becomes a pattern. You know what I'm saying? A pattern. A pattern background. If stripes get repeated, then it's a stripe pattern background. If circles get repeated, it's a circle pattern. If a little paw gets repeated, it's a paw pattern background. Anything that's repetitive and repeated becomes a pattern. Okay, so you can have a pattern background. So you can have a pattern, a transparency, a texture, an image, and a color. Can you see all the different types of backgrounds you can get? And so, why you can choose what is the most fitting? But background is a something you have to consider in your design. 
does it add to the depth or does it not add to the depth of the design? So, so as soon as you get to a, a background, so if my layout is landscape and my layout is portrait and I've got a picture, right? I can decide I'm going to put the picture there right across or I'm going to put the picture to the left and there's my open panel that bleeds or there's my background that bleeds or I can put a panel across it then it becomes a block so I can now play around with my shapes my text my image and my blocks so I'm considering it considering it and this is my background and if I put the picture there that is my background because it's bleeding and now I can see how do I treat my background and how do I treat my blocks. Now I'm going to make a suggestion. If, you got, if you're doing a layout, I'm going to make the suggestion that we always put a little background panel. So I'm, not to confuse you between blocks and panels, I'm going to call it a panel. Whenever you've got a little bleed at the bottom, I'm going to call it a panel. Because it bleeds out, I should call it a background, but because it's so small, it's very confusing if I call it a background, so I call it a, pa uh, a panel. And usually you find these panels at the bottom of the design. Have you looked at designs or adverts and you find a panel at the bottom? Yeah. Right. Look at adverts, you'll find a panel at the bottom. Look at designs, look at the posters, sometimes you find a panel at the bottom. In web design, you should always find a panel at the bottom. In web design, what do we call this panel, Colin? Footer. So see this panel as the footer. It's where you want to put all the other information that has to be there and you don't really want to put it there. Like the contact details, maybe put the logo there. You don't want to put it big. It's this extra little stuff that you want, don't want to put in. But in the main part there, you always want to put the heading, the subheading, and the body text. And the rest, the logo, and the terms and conditions, and whatever, you put at the footer. And the page number. Yeah, you put at the footer, right? Yeah. So, in that space, where's the heading, where's the subheading, where? And how is this background treated? So, we're not really going to call it a background, but in a way call it then a panel but don't call it a block call it a block when it's somewhere inside the image okay now the fit the most traditional way of of designing a layout the most traditional way of designing a layout is to have your width and your height, have your footer, have your he heading somewhere about there. Look where's the focal point of your design. Let's say it's a bottle of wine, uh, let's say it's a, it's a food setting. So there is the food plate and the food and the bottle of wine and the glass. So it's in the middle. And then it goes out, it bleeds out. And then you can decide, am I going to put it into a block? Uh, sorry, is it going to be in a... Am I going to see the edge or is it going to bleed out? And if it doesn't bleed out, then you've got to consider this background and how you're going to... What color you're going to give the background. So how do you choose on the color to give the background? You relate to the dominant color inside the picture. You put in it as the background color. So whatever dominates in here, you tone it down with the background. Because remember, we want background to recede, to go, and if it's white, then it's going to push it to the front. So you try and match the background with the eyedropper to let it match. And then you look at the dominant color here, and then you make it either white or black, not white or black, in other words, normal or reverse, and give it the color that's fitting. You can also eyedrop a, a lighter color from the image. Yes, for the heading, yeah. you can choose a lighter color if you want it to look like reverse. But if the image is already light, 
yeah. then you might want to choose just a color dark. that's slightly darker, but not too dark, because then it's going to clash. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep it equal. You want to marry the two, so you keep it equal. Okay, so guys, I want you now to uh, do something totally different. I want you to now choose an image, a classic car. And then I want you to... Then I want you to... Uh, put it in a layout with a footer. You can put the... You can put... Let's just put the web address at the bottom. www.classiccars.co.za As our extra text. And then we call it classic cars. Okay? I'm going to show you uh, an example that uh, I think is quite good. Um, from last year's uh, students. And I'll put it on the groups. Well, let's actually look at it now. Because we are almost done. Um, let me find it. So I'll show you what I think was quite a, a good one. Now keeping all of these things in mind that we've discussed. And then I'll also put it on the group so that you know. And remember, by starting to teach you, I'm just going to put a heading like classic cars and a picture as a, and a photograph as a starting point. And tomorrow we'll talk about the second color. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Yeah. Classic cars show. So would you say that is a good design? Look how the classic cars show compares to the car. Which is slightly more dominant, the classic cars or the car? Which is slightly more dominant, the classic cars or the car? In this design. Right, so there's male and there's female. So, the, which is the most dominant one here? The car. So, the image. And here's the text. Now, didn't we say that normally the text is more dominant? But what I'm saying is, it doesn't have to. As long as it's not overpowering. As long as it's not too dominant. So, it's dominant, but you've got to be careful that it doesn't become too dominant. But why is it not too dominant? Why? Because the classic car size is relatively good. And because the color at the bottom strengthens the color at the top and the color inside the car strengthens it's like the child is on the side of of this one of the text because of the color you see these little subtle things but it's not it's dominant the car but it's not over dominant but remember you are and now let's look at the colors Let's look at the colors. What is the dominant color? Red. Right, so it's uh, red. And on the scale of the rainbow colors, which is closest to red? What is closest to red? Orange. So there's orange. So they didn't choose the background as blue, because on the red scale, orange is the, the red. What will go further if you go to this side of, this, of, of the red? What would be the next color? If it's not going to be orange and yellow, and you're now moving towards blue, what would be the next color? Purple. Do you see any purples in there? Yes. Yes, the bonnet. Uh, yeah. Now you see, that's the dominant color, and now I've put orange and purple. But because red is warm, I'm putting more orange and less purple. But purple would look better than blue. You see what, what I'm saying? So it's almost like it's in a sunset. And there's this hue of blue. 
which we call purple, but it's a hue of blue. Because in the daylight, that bonnet would be red. Because this car, what color is this car? Purple or red? What is the color of this car? Purple or red? What do you think? Okay. Why? Because the design says it's red. The heading says it's red. It's not just like you see the cards on its own. If you see the cards on the own, you wouldn't know really. But you would say red because the sunlight is hitting it there. So there is the dark side or the shadow side. And remember where the sunlight hits, that's where it's going to tell you the real color. So the real color is red. Okay, so we all know that, that that is just the way the light has fallen because there's the red and there's the red. So the real color of the car is red. Okay, because that's where the light falls. The light will reveal the real color. It's depending on the hue of the design, it could throw that shadow as being purple, black, any dark color. Okay, guys, so this is a very successful design. Now I want you to do classic cars as well. Choose a car, choose the size and the position of your shape. Remember when you're doing shape, you're looking at the size and the position. Okay, put it in the layout. This is a landscape. You can decide on landscape or portrait. I'm not going to dictate it to you. You can decide if you want portrait or landscape. Here's another one. Does this work? Yeah. yeah. All right. It works. Why? Look at the way. That it works. So let, 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 look, let's look at the text and the, the image. Classic car show and then the wording. Right. So they put classic car show on the top and the car in the middle. So in terms of the layout, they both centered. It's not like they put the car to the left and the car to the right. They both in the middle. And now you can say, yeah, but it's a bit further from the car. But guess what? The texts are also further from each other. So it's okay to be slightly further. If it goes closer, the text will go closer and the car will go closer to the heading. It's like it's now fragmenting. So it's working. And we put in the dominant color. Now here is the clash between two colors that seems to be dominant. Which is the dominant color? The, the blue or light blue or the brown? The light blue or the brown? The light blue. The light blue because the car is light blue. Yeah, the light blue is coming to the front yeah. and the brown is going to the back. So whatever is in the front where, or the lightest part is the most dark, dominant color. Oh, right. So the light blue is not. Now you are considering is it the blue? Is it the thing? Is it. But the light blue is, is relating to the text and the car, so it's yeah. the most important thing. So it's pushing it to the front, so you're going to see it as yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. But because the balance is about 50-50, if I turn it into a black and white gray scale, then the scale won't be too dominant. It will be almost on the same tone and scale in the middle. Yeah. It's not like this is a very dark brown. It's almost like the, the tonal scales are equal, so it gives harmony. Yeah. If the background was very dark, you see, then it'll push the car much to the front as well. But let's say the, 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 the car was smaller, then the background will become dominant. dominant. Because the car is becoming smaller and the text is becoming smaller, then you wouldn't know. Then you think the brown is. We've also got that foreground of that image as well, which yeah, also yeah. dominates the whole That thing. also dominates, you see. So it's like 50-50. If you take that, it's 50-50. If you take that, it's 50-50. So it works because of the scale range is the tonal values are equal. So you can bring in a second color, but you've got to know who dominates. The, the text in the car, they are married. There are no... Uh, 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 the panel is at the bottom. The panel is a different color, right? So who's the, 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 the child relating more to the car or to the image? Not one, it's, it's, it's taking the side of the background. The panel is taking the side of the background in terms of color. 
I'm going to say if they did if they did the the panel turquoise and the text brown, then the child would be taking the side of them and it would look better. I would have said if you made the the, 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 the turquoise just a slight darker shade of that blue, it would probably have looked better. But I don't know, it balances. So I'm not going to be too critical of it. It either works or it doesn't work. And it's working. Alright, so you can analyze it, but you want to stick to the basic principles. So in each one, I'm adding a panel at the bottom. So see the panel as a child. It's important, but it's not that important. Let's look at the next one. So in your design on classic class, I want you to put in the footer at the bottom. You see how the colors all blend? The tonal values of the colors all blend together. Okay? Yeah, so there is always a dominant color and a dominant tone. So is the dominant, uh, is the dominant, what, so tell me what is the dominant color and the dominant tone? Is the dominant tone going towards light or is it going towards black? That blue, that darker blue color. Yeah, so, so the, I would say there is a, it's, it's like a mid-tone. It's not like it's very dark or very light. It's yeah. a mid-tone. Now I'd say it's light. If I zoom in, it seems light. Yeah. But if I zoom out, it tends to be more darker. The more I zoom out, the darker it becomes. I think because you chose the color of the, the heading and that footer to be the same darker color. As inside the core. So that dominates. So the darker it tends to dominate light, over the white. If you went light on the wording and on the And footer, light at the footer, then the light of the wheel yeah. would start standing out. Yeah. You see, but it's I choose which I want to be more dominant or less dominant. Yeah. So I can choose, do I want my tonal value more dark or more light, or in the tone. I choose my dominant colors. And where is that second color? Where is the second color inside the picture? It's this color of the grass, which is the gold, the gold, and the gold of that strip. That's almost like it's, and then I've brought it in here yeah. as well. So I never left it white. I bring in that second color. So consider these things now when you're doing your, your design. But I haven't, most of them has gone the traditional way. Heading, picture, footer. Heading, picture, footer. Heading, picture, footer. That's sort of the traditional. Heading, picture, footer. I'm not saying you mustn't use it. Start using it as, let's try a classic design. And everything seems to be centered. Now, look where they put the word car show. They could have put it in the center, and now they've decided to, to put it on the right. Yeah. I don't know. Works. But this one looks better, because they've made this symmetrical. So you can say which is better, which is not better, and why, but they both work. I think because the, the, the front of the vehicle is pointing to that side, it balances by having an asymmetrical solution. Right, now I can ask you, of those three cars, it's very difficult to say which design is the best, because they all follow the design principles. And now the individual will come in and say, no, I like, if you ask the young people, they like this classic car. Right? But if you ask the old people, they like the combi, because it reminds them of their younger days. So, design is subjective. As long as you adhere to the design principles, it doesn't matter whether the person likes your design or don't like your design. It's just that your design must adhere to the design principles. And the design principles is, after you've looked at the shape, you've got to ask yourself, is there tone and is there depth? And what is the tonal value and what is the depth value? So, can I, can I sh show you on, on that thing, the depth value is still mid. Because it's neither too dark nor too, too light, but it's tending to go towards dark, as, a ten as opposed to tending to, to go towards light. 
Which one would you say is the darkest tonal value? Which one seems to be the darker tonal value? The top or the bottom one? Yeah. The bottom. Yeah. Because of the color. You see, and because the text now looks reverse. You see, as soon as the text gets pushed to the front, it seems like the background is pushing to the back. So there is color depth. But this, uh, 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 if that classic cars was in white, it would have shot it to the front. Mm. So you could choose how far do you want to shoot something to the front or the back. And the three layers are... Your heading is a layer, your image is a layer, and your background is a layer. Right? So think of it the three. So I'm not saying it has to be, but the front is tending to push to the front, then the background and the image is wanting to push it to the back. How do you make it push it to the back? Is you simply put in a darker tone. You make it a darker tone, then it'll push it to the back. So you will see, Colin will see, in all our banners, we try to push the image to the back by just putting a darker tone over it, so that the heading can stand out. So this can stand out. Why? Because we want to make the text the most dominant one. Okay. So guys, rather try to make your... your uh, 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 I'm not saying that the text must be very dominant, but make your text slightly dominant. Because what you want to read first is classic cars. What I'm reading, what I'm looking at first is the car. I'm not looking at the classic car. I'm looking at the car first. But on the other one, I'm looking at the classic cars first and then at the car. And then at the other one, I'm looking at the classic cars first and then I'm looking at the classic car. It's like there's an equal play on what I'm looking at first. I'm looking at the car first, but I'm also looking at classic cars. They, it's like I'm looking at both first, but in the other one, it's like I'm looking at the car first and then the word on top. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Um, let's, I'll forward that also on the group and let's do your own classic car, but in full color. Okay.